introduce our speaker to us. Tell us where he's from. Yes, I'm very excited tonight. Friend of mine, we minister together on the Ford Ministry. And Itacho and his wife name is Rebecca Becky. Itacho, he's a pastor, evangelist, he's going to seminary school. And he's a medical doctor. He work on clinical research at Indiana State University. And it, that today is his first day to preach on American brother and sister. To preach in English. So, uh, I was telling them when we took the picture outside, this is not going to be your last one. God is going to open the door for you. You're going to minister all over. And He loved the Lord. So I, I encourage you to listen good. And later He will pray for us. And I've been blessed by His ministry. I know God is going to do something special tonight. So Amen. God bless you. Isaiah 10, 27 said, 
it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from his, your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Okay? The anointing has a power to destroy the yoke and to remove the burden from our shoulder. And the anointing is the presence of the Holy Spirit. It has power, you know. When I say the word of the Lord, who's gonna, uh, uh, you know, God is the one behind his word. And when the ministers say the word of the Lord, the spirit of the God is gonna work on it, okay? Amen. So it remove any burden. If you come today with sickness or any thing you have, the Spirit of the Lord is going to remove from you. And you will sense the presence of God now. I believe the Holy Spirit is here tonight. So God is going to speak to us, to our heart. And He will show us how we are going to go next in our Christian work. If you don't know Him, you can start to know Him. Amen. If we know Him, He will show us how we are going to go next in our life in his word and i believe the holy spirit gonna do that tonight amen and his power is here amen so my word tonight for you is based on romans number 12 chapter 12 1 and 2. so we will read together and i will pray when uh, we finish and i believe god gonna do something big here tonight amen his power is with us. Amen. Okay, I, will read, uh, I will read in the name of Jesus. It says in Romans uh, 12, that's 1,305. Uh, page 1,305 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercy of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable services and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that may prove what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. When Paul says this verse in Romans number 12, before when we read Romans, the whole Romans, when Paul starts his message to a Rome, Roman church, they are the uh, Gentiles, they don't know God. They don't have covenant with God. So Paul want to address to them. And he writes uh, the letter. When we read all Romans, it has some uh, The way he wrote uh, those letters in Romans chapter 1, he was saying how the gospel of Jesus Christ, when he said in uh, Romans 1 5, he said, the gospel of Jesus Christ is about Jesus. It says in five, what it says, the reason why he writes these letters, Paul said, Paul, a born servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle separated for the gospel of God, which he promised before so his prophets in the Holy Scripture concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with the power according to the Spirit of Holiness by resurrection from the dead. So the reason why Paul wrote Romans is he want to show us how the gospel of Jesus Christ is powerful and who Jesus Christ is. So when he wrote when you read chapter 1, he was telling us how sin is very bad and how people, they don't know God. And when people, they don't know God, what might
manifestation gonna show in their life. In Roman number one, he showed how sin is bad to the people. And we see uh, on the end of the chapter one, how people who don't know God, their life gonna be mess. And how they, they are in bondage to sin. For example, you can see uh, in 128, uh, Paul say, likewise also the man, uh, 127, leaving the natural use of the woman and burn in their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of the error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gives them over to be the best mind to do those things which are not fitting. So he revealed us how sin can affect human heart and people can show a nature which is, which is not normal. But even they don't realize it is not normal because sin has a power to darken our conscience. It has great power. For example, look at those windows. When you see those windows, if they are clear, we can see outside. Okay? If they are dark or we put some mud or something, you can see from inside to outside. And when God created us, He put concise in our spirit. And the reason why we have concise is to know what's right and what's wrong. But sin has a, a character to darken this judgment. And people start to know. They don't know what they are doing. So even sometimes we can do that or we can see people do that. So Paul was saying in chapter 1 how sin is bad. And in chapter 2 he showed if we judge others, we have to be, be careful because we do the same like them and if we judge them we are not different even though we say they are bad 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 but if we do that that's not good so in chapter 3 he come and say all human beings are under curse and no one can be salvation get salvation by his work and he come to justification by faith he said in chapter 3, 21, you might, all of you might know it, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Redemption is only in Jesus Christ. And it is by faith, it's not by work. So, grace is for human being. If we receive that grace, we can have power to be free from sin. Sin's power. So Paul was saying all these things in, and he come in chapter 4. All of us know Abraham. He's the father of faith. And Paul said, okay, look. If it is by grace, let me show you how Abraham justified by grace and he debate to them our father Abraham how God called him when God called Abraham he was moon worshipper he was worshipping other gods and God when he was 75 some of you might say oh I am old to be used by God but look God used Abraham when he was 75 and he called him and he said I, I, I want to have covenant with you and your seed gonna conquer all the earth and I want to bless all nations through you and the Bible told us Abraham believes us so he, be, he called to be righteous. So the reason why Abraham is righteous, it is not by his work, it's by faith. So God wants us to know him and to know his grace. 
His grace has power. If you have any problem, the grace of God has the power to break any chain, any bond, anything which the enemy put on your neck. Because the anointing has a power to destroy those yokes. And this is the power of God. If no, nobody of us, no one on this earth's planet who born from Adam has the power to do that except his son his name is jesus christ and he is sinless and blameless he work and perfect work so that's why he has that power to release us and he loves us why jesus did all this for us because of his love so paul was saying all this and in chapter six when you see chapter six he said how we identify with him. Okay. If we are in Christ, we are new creation. Amen. When Jesus died on the cross, we all of us was in him. So when we believe in him, that power in his, his righteousness become our righteousness. Amen. He took our sin and he is sin for us on the cross and we become what righteousness of god so there is one righteousness that righteousness is righteousness of god Amen. and we are the righteousness of god what that is the bible said that to us the reason why we are righteous or we have the righteousness means right standing with god Amen. the reason why we have right standing it is because of jesus christ he God put us on him, in him. And that's why if we don't know Jesus, if we don't, we don't believe in him, we don't have nothing with God. Because Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. Amen. No one can come to God except through me. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the gate. He is the only gate. There is no other door to come to the heaven, to the kingdom of God. He is the only door one can come and have contact with God. The reason why the Holy Spirit is here is now because of Jesus. In all of us, there is the blood. Okay? The blood has the power to remove any sin. If any one of you tonight believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, your sin washed away by his blood. Amen. The blood has the power to cleanse us. He is the perfect thing to remove sin. Amen. It's not by praying, Amen. it's not by offering, or it's not by doing some religious stuff. It is only and only by the blood of Jesus Christ one can be right stand with God. Amen. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Paul was saying all this thing. And everybody was happy. And when you come to chapter 8, he was saying, if you say we are right to stand with God, we need another thing. Because this life is not a life of flesh. It should be a life in the spirit. So Paul, he said in chapter 8, 1, if anybody or anyone is in Christ, there is no condemnation. There is no condemnation. And he said, the spirit of the living God, he removed any power of sin and death from us in chapter 8 too. So, oh, when we say, okay, if that is good, let's have that thing. And he come to chapter 12 and 1. He said, if you are saved by grace and you if you have the life of God in you so how are we gonna live the real Christian living my topic of tonight is how we gonna live Christian living okay, how we, okay we saved by grace we saved by faith and we got righteousness of God so how are we gonna work in our life 
So he came on chapter 12 and 1 and he said to us. So when you read Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Okay? We are all, we all of us are brethren. Amen. The reason why we are brothers because we born from the spirit of God. Amen. Our father is God. Amen. Our spiritual identity, which is our real who we are, we are identified in Christ. You see, all we have different color and different education status, with different background, with different uh, wealth or something. Some poor, some rich, some. But when we see in our spirit, all of us born from the spirit of God. Amen. So God is our Father. Amen. And our spirit is born again from God. Because when we believe in God, His Spirit regenerate our spirit and we have the new life. So Paul said, that's why he said, brethren, then by the mercy of the Lord, by the mercy of God, you see, the mercy of God has a power. Okay, it's the only way we can stand with God or to ask favor from God, it's by his mercy. The reason why we don't have righteousness in our son. So we are the product of his mercy. Amen. And his mercy see us. And he give us his grace. Amen. So Paul said, I, this is the motivating factor. To live right as a Christian, it is the mercy of God. Amen. And then he, he said, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. When we see the Old Testament, in Old Testament, when you read Leviticus, Numbers, and all Deuteronomy and everything, people offer to God birds, gods, sheep, every time to the priest and to God. But those sheep, God's bulls, they were, what? They slain them and they present to God. They were dead sacrifice. But in New Testament, God wants our living body to be sacrificed to Him. Amen. He, he, doesn't, he, he doesn't want us to dead, but He wants us alive and to be His temple. That's why he said we have to present our body. In Romans 6.13, Paul said, all of you, we, have, we get righteousness, we get mercy, but he told us we have to present our bodies yes. as an instrument of God's righteousness. Amen. So when we say by grace and we are no more ourselves. We are His. Amen. Because He purchased us by His blood. Amen. And our body, our eyes, our ears, our hands, our legs, all belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. So He wants all those members of our body to be the living sacrifice Amen. to God. Amen. That means when we live, we have to use our legs to walk and to witness for Christ Jesus. Amen. And he wants our mouth to speak his glory, Amen. to speak his praise, Amen. to speak. That, that means the living sacrifice. Amen. It doesn't mean God doesn't want our offering. He wants us. Amen. First, we have to present ourselves to him. Amen. Most people want to give God something. God doesn't want our something. He loves us. Amen. So He wants us. Amen. And we have to present ourselves to Him. Amen. Then when we give ourselves to Him, He can have everything of us. Amen. Our money, Amen. our children, and our, our everything. 
That's why Paul said, you have to present your body a living sacrifice. <laughs> and he said in Romans 6, 13, it's very, very essential. When, if you want a right living to God, this verse is very essential. He said, and do not present your members as an instrument of unrighteousness. If once we are for God, we shouldn't present our members as unrighteousness to, to sin. But what he said, but present yourself to God as being alive for the dead and your members as an instrument of righteousness to God. That means a living sacrifice means that. And he said in the fourth, he said it should be holy. Amen. And when he say holy, holy means it should be clean Amen. and separated. Amen. Holiness, it doesn't mean you do something or something. No. When we are holy, first his blood cleans us. Amen. So he clean us. Then he wants us to be separated. And to be used by him. Amen. That is holy sacrifice. And he said in the fifth, acceptable to God. You see, God never accepts everything. Right. He has a standard. Amen. He has a standard. Even in the secular world, the world it has a standard. Yeah. If you don't have those requirements, you can't be qualified for the thing. But for God, for us to be acceptable by Him, we are accepted by His Son, Jesus Christ. But Jesus doesn't give us a burden. He said, let me live in you. Amen. You see, in the New Testament, what we need to do is to let Him to live in us. Amen. And His life to be revealed to the world. He doesn't ask us to live our life. He said, let, if you love me, let live, I want to live in you. Okay? If we say we love Jesus, he will ask, okay, if you love me, I want to ask you one thing. Let me live in your life. Amen. When Jesus lives in us, people can see him. Amen. But if we live our life, people see us. So they get mad with us. Or we might say some words we don't want to say, but we found ourselves saying those things. So Jesus said, you see, it is not religious. We have to know him by life. Amen. If we know him in life, he starts to manifest himself in us. And people can see our life our doing, our, it's a lifestyle. When Paul says this, acceptable to God, he said, life is a lifestyle. It's the way how we do. So he said, all this, which is the reasonable service. This is the reasonable service we can give to God. After we do present our body to, as a living sacrifice to God, then we start to know his will. And God, Paul said in um, number 2, 12 to, and do not be conformed to this world. But what, it, he said it is a lifestyle. So you shouldn't conform your life as, don't live as the worldly people live. Because Christians have their way of life. Amen. We shouldn't live as others because we are a chosen generation and we are the people of God. So a people of God has a way to live like his, their God. Amen. And they want to do his life. They want to do what he like. So Paul says that. And to know the will of God, first what we have to do, don't conform to the world. But what he said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's very really important. 
our biggest problem is our mind. It's not outside. It's not devil. Or it's not anything. Because the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, he is so big. Like, like he thinks. If you start something in your mind, you will do it. If something comes to your mind and if you think on it, next you see yourself doing that. So, the only way to stop not to do something, we have to stop thinking of okay. about this. Okay. That's the renewing of mind. For example, nobody say, you know, we talk about devil, devil do this, devil do that, but devil, is there any one of us see devil has knife or something? No, but he used human mind and they think and they get the knife and they kill somebody. He used humans to kill humans. How he used? He used their mind. Yes, that's good. Because he gives them wrong thinking. Yes. And he put hatred. He puts different, different things. Because he's a spirit. We can see him, but we can feel him. You know how, how Jesus said when he described about spirit, a spirit is like a wind. No one sees wind, but we see if there is wind or not. Because when we see the trees bending or moving or something, we know there is wind. The spirit is like that. When we think wrong thing, that thinking comes from that spirit. So we have to rebuke it. Amen. And we don't let those thinking to stay in our mind. We have a power. Amen. You know why? The Bible says, God give us power, love, and sound mind. Amen. He never give us spirit of fear. Amen. So we have to say no for anything which is against our conscience. Amen. And don't accept any wrong thinking. That's why when we renew our mind, that is the gate for the Spirit of God can speak to us. If we don't renew our mind, our thinking, our mind become a good workshop for devil. He can use us. He can, you know, if he gets one person poison his mind with his thoughts, he can distributes different bad things, rumors, and everything because he, he used his mind. So the only thing we can stop something to be happen is we have to stop the thinking. That's why Paul say, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When your mind is changed, that you may prove what is the good the acceptable and the perfect will of God. Amen. So if any one of us want to know what God think or what is the will of God, we have to renew our mind. Because unless we renew our mind, we cannot able to listen to Him. Because there is another opinion in our mind which is against God. <coughs> and when we read in Corinthians 10, 3, Paul said, our weapon is strong. It has ability to overthrow the stronghold of the enemy. Amen. And the stronghold of the enemy is the mind. When we obedient to Jesus Christ, then we have the power to conquer. Amen. When we obedient to Jesus Christ, our obedience is in our thinking. Amen. Amen. It's good. not, nobody can do for us. We have to decide. Amen. God, I want to be changed. Let's renew my mind. Our enemy is our mind. Yes. It is not the enemy. Our mind, if we change our mind, our life starts to be changed. Amen. So we have to take the responsibility. Amen. The reason for my life is not somebody else. Or somebody else's. It is me. When I start saying it is me, because I give God a ground to work in my life. Amen. But when we say, but when we say, oh somebody else, somebody else, 
God does, he, he doesn't work in us. Because always God wants to take the responsibility. Our fault, whatever we did, we have to take the responsibility. Whether it's good or bad, we can't refer somebody, even the enemy. God never listened. Look, in Genesis number 3, when Adam and Eve do the sin, God never talked to the devil. He came to Adam. Where, where are you, Adam? Because God gave instruction to Adam. And he gave the wisdom, the ability, the knowledge to say no. But he refused that knowledge and he acted his will. So God never spoke to the enemy. Because we, all of us, have the responsibility, the will, which God gave to us. So when we present our will to God, God starts to heal us. Amen. And He changed our life. Amen. And He's, Jesus is going to manifest in our life. Amen. That's why Paul said, the will of God is one, good. Always, the will of God is good, it's acceptable and perfect. Amen. And to know this, we have to renew in our mind. Amen. So, I want to pray tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> we will pray for a while. And we will see if any one of you, I believe, you know, when God said, I, I remove your burden and your yoke to be broken because the anointing of God is here Amen. if you have anything to be prayed I will pray but first I will ask is there any one of you here who doesn't know God who want to receive him is there anyone okay if no we will pray now all of us, let's be in prayer. And we will see what God is going to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear God, Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we yes. invite you in this place. We invite you in your yes. presence. Yes. Let yes. remove any burden from your people. Amen. Lord of mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God. I pray in your son's name. I pray in Jesus' name. Any bondage, any yoke to be broken now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I will ask you, God, to break any chain, any bondage, any obstacle, anything which the enemy assigned in the people of God. Now I command you the enemy go away from the people of God. Amen. And I break any chain in the name of Jesus. Amen. I break any bondage, any obstacles, anything which is not of you, Lord, let be removed from your people. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we thank you so much. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy God. We praise your name. Yes. We praise your name. Yes. Jesus, you are the one who saved us. Amen. Who died for us in your, on the cross. Yes. And you give us all the privilege to yes. be the sons of God. Yes. Lord, we thank you so much. And tonight, yes. remove any burden from right the people now. of God. Yes. Right Amen. now, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Any worry, any anxiety, yes. anything yes. which the enemy put yes. on the neck yes. and the shoulder yes. of the people, now removed by the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Lord let your power prevail now Lord of mercy we thank you so much you give us all the privilege all the power in Jesus name Amen we thank you so much God bless you Amen